Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to review a dangerous rectangle pattern and show you several types of these rectangles, six to be exact. This occurs often, so it's good to know what to look out for. First, let's review what uniqueness is. It's the rule that every valid Sudoku puzzle must have one and only one unique solution. If it has more than one solution, well, then you have to start guessing. And the idea is to solve Sudoku using logic, not guessing. And that, of course, means a puzzle must have only one solution. Now, we can use that rule to help us solve puzzles since we can eliminate candidates that would otherwise result in an invalid puzzle. I have previously posted a video on types 1, 2, and 3 unique rectangles, and in this video I'm going to quickly review those and then show you some more unique rectangles, types 4, 5, and 6. The logic or pattern for all of these types of unique rectangles is basically the same. Let me explain by using this puzzle already in progress. Here you can see a 1-5 pair in the highlighted boxes. The definition of a unique rectangle is that the same two candidates appear in exactly two rows, two columns, and two blocks. And that's what we have here. The same two candidates, the 1 and the 5, are in exactly two rows, these two rows, exactly two columns, and exactly two blocks. So this forms a unique rectangle pattern. For the time being, just ignore the extra candidates in this cell. Now, if only the 1 and the 5 were true in these four cells, any of these cells could be a 1 or a 5 without affecting any of the other cells in the puzzle. So these two cells could be the 1s, then these two cells would be the 5s, or these two cells would be the 1s, and then these two cells would be the 5s. But regardless of which two cells are the 1s and which two cells are the 5s, it doesn't have any effect on the rest of the puzzle, so we have more than one solution here. Some people refer to this as a deadly pattern because it would invalidate a puzzle, having more than one solution. So that means to avoid the deadly pattern, this cell can't be a 1 or a 5, it's either the 6 or the 9, and we can eliminate the 1 and 5 from this cell. This is an example of a type 1 unique rectangle, and if you'd like to see some more examples of a type 1 unique rectangle, please check out my previous video. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below this video. Okay, let's move on to a type 2 unique rectangle. In this case, we have two non-diagonal cells that have the same one and only one extra candidate. Here we have the 1 and 4, again, in two rows, two columns, and two blocks. And these two non-diagonal cells have the same one and only one extra candidate, the 5. When I say non-diagonal, I mean they are not diagonal to each other. They are in the same column, right? So now we know that one of these fives has to be true, or we would end up with the deadly pattern with the one and four being any of these four cells, and that can't be, just like before. But now we have two cells here, and one of them is a 5 to avoid the deadly pattern, right? One of these cells has to be a 5, but we don't know which one, so any cell that sees both of these cells with the 5 can't be a 5 and can be eliminated. One more time, one of these cells is a 5, right? So otherwise we would have the 1, 4 as a deadly pattern. So if one of these cells is a 5, then any cell that sees both these cells can't be a 5. So this 5 is in the same column as these two cells, so we can eliminate this 5. And these two 5s are in the same block, so we can eliminate these two. Great! That was a type 2 unique rectangle. Let's call it a UR so we don't have to keep saying unique rectangle. What about a type 3 UR? Well, in a type 3 UR, again, we look for two non-diagonal cells that have more than one extra candidate. Remember, in a type 2 UR, we looked for non-diagonal cells having the same one and only one candidate. So, in a type 3 UR, we now look for non-diagonal cells that have more than one extra candidate. In this example, we see a possible UR unique rectangle on the 6 and 8 in these four cells. 
The 6-8 pair is in two rows and two columns and two blocks, so it fits the rule. Now, the extra candidates in the two non-diagonal cells, that's these two cells, are the 5 in this cell and the 2 and the 5 in these cells. Those are the extra candidates. Without those extra candidates, the 2 and the 5, we would have a puzzle with two solutions. So one of those cells cannot be a 6 or an 8, or we would have the deadly pattern of more than one solution, and we can't have that if this is a valid puzzle. So those two extra candidates are the 2 and the 5, and one of those candidates, either the 2 or the 5, has to be true in order to avoid the deadly pattern. We can treat these two non-diagonal cells as one cell with a 2-5 pair, and if we look down the same column, we see there's a cell with a 2-5 pair. So this forms a locked pair, meaning the 2 and 5 are locked into these three cells in column 5. The 2 and the 5 are in two of these cells. One is for sure in this 2-5 cell. It's either a 2 or a 5. And then one of these non-diagonal cells can't be a 6 or an 8. So to avoid having multiple solutions to the puzzle, one of these cells is the other number, either the 2 or the 5. Now, any cell that sees all three cells can't be a 2 or a 5. And this cell in the same column sees all three cells, and it has a 5, so we can eliminate this 5. Okay, all of this was a review since I have a full-length video on types 1, 2, and 3 unique rectangles, but I think it was a good review, and now we can move on to a type 4 unique rectangle. Here's the unique rectangle. It is made up of the 5 and 7 in these four cells. Again, they are in two rows, two columns, and two blocks. And again, we look for additional candidates in two non-diagonal cells. And here we have the 3 in this cell and the 9 in this cell. So those are the additional candidates. But with a type 4 UR, we ignore those extra candidates. We ignore the 3 and the 9, and instead focus on the UR candidates, focus on the 5 and the 7 in that column. Now, if a 5 or 7 is not a candidate in that column, then the other candidate can be eliminated from the UR. So in this case, the 5 is not a possible candidate in the column, but the 7 is. We have a possible 7 here in this cell, and also down here in this cell. So the 7 can be elsewhere in the column, but not the 5. It does not appear as a possible candidate anywhere else in the column. So one of these cells in column 4 has to be a 5. Therefore, neither of these cells can also be a 7, or we would end up with the dangerous rectangle pattern. If one of these cells is a 5, the other can't be a 7, so we can eliminate the 7 here and here. Otherwise, we would have a 5-7 in all four cells, and we can't have that, or we would have an invalid puzzle. So these 7s have to go. Let's take a look at one more type 4 unique rectangle. Here we have a UR made up of the 1 and 4, again in two rows, two columns, and two blocks. But here we have the additional candidates in two non-diagonal cells in the same row. In the previous example, it was in the same column. So here we're going to look across the row instead of like before where we look down the column. But remember, with a type 4 UR, we focus on the UR candidates, the 1 and the 4, and ignore the extra candidates. So looking across the row, we see there isn't a possible 1 in the row. There are two possible 4s, but no 1s. So one of these cells has to be a 1, and the other can't be a 4, or we would have an impossible or deadly pattern. So we can eliminate the 4 from both of these cells. Are you ready for a type 5 unique rectangle? Hopefully, you are seeing that in all of these different types, the logic is the same. If placing a number would result in an invalid puzzle, that is a puzzle with more than one solution, then that can't be the number. Okay, here is a type 
five unique rectangle. This has similar logic to a type two UR, but in this case, the additional candidate can also be in the diagonal cells. Here we have a UR with the numbers eight and nine. The extra candidate, the six, appears in these two non-diagonal cells, as well as these two diagonal cells. In other words, in three of the four cells, we have the extra candidate, the six. One of these three cells has to be a six to break up the deadly pattern, but we don't know which cell, but one of them has to be a six, and that means that any cell that sees all three cells with the extra candidate can't be a six. And this cell sees all three. It's in the same row as these two cells and the same block as this cell, so this six can be eliminated. Okay, here's another type five unique rectangle. The candidates three and nine form a unique rectangle in two rows, two columns, and two blocks. And again, we have three cells with an extra candidate, the seven. One of these three cells has to be the seven to break the deadly pattern. So any cell that sees all three cells can't be a seven. This cell is in the same block as these two cells and in the same column as these two cells. So this seven sees all three cells and we can therefore eliminate it. And that leaves us with a naked single, the nine. And now let's move on to a type six unique rectangle. Again, we have the unique rectangle pattern, this time on the two nine candidates. They form a rectangle comprising of two rows, two columns, and two blocks. In this case, the two diagonal cells have extra candidates, the eight and the five. If one of the UR candidates, either the two or the nine, is nowhere else in the two rows or two columns of the UR, then it can be eliminated from the cells with the extra candidates. Here, the number nine is nowhere else in the two rows or the two columns, so it can be eliminated from these two cells with the extra candidates. The two is in the rows and in the columns, so that we need to leave alone. But the nine, since it is nowhere else in the rows or the columns, it can be eliminated. The logic here is the same as with a type four unique rectangle. Since the candidate nine only appears within the unique rectangle, it actually forms an X-wing so that if we place the nine here, then it would also have to be placed here on the diagonal and that would force a deadly pattern situation with more than one solution. So that can't be. And therefore the nine can't be in either of these two cells and it can be eliminated. Let's take a look at one more type six unique rectangle. Here, the unique rectangle is made up of the one and two in these four cells. They are in two rows, two columns, and two blocks. On the diagonal, we see the extra candidates, the three and the four, but we can ignore those and look to see if there's a one or a two in the two rows and two columns that make up the UR. And there are ones in the rows, and in the columns, but I don't see any twos in either of the rows or the columns making up the UR. So that means the two can be eliminated from the diagonal cells with the extra candidates. Otherwise, if those two cells were twos, we would end up with a puzzle with more than one solution. Wow, that was a great review of the various types of unique rectangles, types one through six. How about a type seven? A type seven UR is also called a hidden rectangle, and I'm gonna leave that for my next video, so please stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when I upload it. Until then, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.